Good morning. Thank you for coming. I always use blue background because I was told that people remember things on blue backgrounds. And I'll apologize ahead of time for violating the number of words per slide, which my wife reminds me I do all the time. And I, this, this is reduced. Um, this project is a, a larger project that was conducted by myself along with Wes Jennings, one of my former graduate students, uh, David Farrington, uh, Richard Tremblay, and Brandon Welsh. And we'd like to thank uh, publicly David Weisberg and David Wilson for their very useful comments uh, on our project. A little bit of background. Early antisocial behavior, as many of you know, is a key risk factor for continued delinquency and crime over throughout the life course. Early family and parent training programs have been advanced as an important preventive effort to combat delinquency and crime throughout the life course. The relevance of early family parent training programs to the prevention of this crime has been suggested in a number of prominent criminological and psychological theories. There are two main types of early family parent training programs that have been used to alter the trajectory of antisocial and criminal behavior over the life course. The first one is the most common one that many of you are familiar with, and those are involving the home visitation programs that were made very prominent by David Olds in the nurse home visitation program efforts uh, in Elmira, New York in the early 1980s. These programs work uh, in generally with at-risk mothers to improve their prenatal health status, so their prevention programs that occur at the time of, uh, well, soon after conception and during the preterm uh, period. Um, they reduce birth complications and provide guidance and support in caring for the infant and improving the quality of the infant's lives as well as the mother's life, but they're targeted at women. The second program in this larger area uh, combine parent training programs, daycare, and preschool for parents with preschool children. These advance cognitive and social development of the children as well as parenting skills of the caregivers so that participants will be better prepared so, and more successful when they enter regular school. So the first set of programs deal with preterm. The second set of programs deal with after the baby is born. Why might early family and parent training programs reduce antisocial behavior and crime and also produce non-crime benefits? There are two main reasons why we believe this is the case. The first one is based on the notion that quality parent-child relations will facilitate the learning control over impulsive, oppositional, and aggressive behavior, thus reducing disruptive behavior and its long-term impact on social integration in various points throughout the life course. The second main reason is that these programs attempt to change the social contingencies or context in the family environment and provide gu guidance to their parents on raising their children and general parent education. Um, f many of you have seen in the bookstores those 100, uh, 100 rules for you know, parenting uh, kids. These programs actually do that stuff in real practice. The policy relevance of these programs is very large. There's a large growth in the early family parent training programs in many Western nations as a method to prevent crime. The Canadian province of Quebec has taken this entire process as a key uh, programmatic effort throughout the province aimed at at-risk mothers in the early stages of their pregnancies. Uh, these programs are expanded into Dublin, uh, into Paris, and researcher, uh, research by uh, Daniel Nagan as well as myself has shown that the public is actually willing to spend more of their tax dollars on these efforts as a way to preventing delinquency and crime over the life course. What do we do in this study? Our study is designed to ask and answer a very specific question. We try to examine the effectiveness of these types of early family parent training programs implemented in early childhood to reduce child behavior problems, including antisocial behavior and delinquency. We assess the research evidence on the effects of these programs on child behavior problems, including antisocial behavior and delinquency. We investigate to the extent possible the settings and conditions that make it most effective as opposed to least effective. And we focus these programs through the age of five, because a lot of these programs are preterm and some of them continue in the first three to five years of the child's life for preventing antisocial behavior and delinquency. Our approach more generally is in the meta-analysis tradition where we pull together the results of a lot of different studies on the same question in order to obtain a more general conclusion rather than one single study does. What are the main findings? First of all, the bullet point, early family 
uh, parent training programs are an effective intervention for reducing antisocial behavior and delinquency. Our evidence on this unequivocally is very strong. It is very, very strong. Early family parent training programs are also e effective in reducing delinquency and crime in later adolescence and into adulthood. Finding support to continued use of early family parent training programs to prevent antisocial behavior and delinquency. And the effect of these programs in reducing antisocial behavior and delinquency is robust across a number of different weighting statistical procedures, across contexts, across time periods, sample sizes, the outcome, whether it's based on self-report data or official record data, and whether it's based on published data or unpublished data. The evidence is very strong. So where, do, where does all this mean? Why is this useful? First of all, our review of the evidence was an advancement over prior studies because they were limited uh, to very early in the life course. We expand the interventions to go through age five to see if that does anything one way or the other. We also separated the various types of interventions into parent training and home visitation. We found similar conclusions. And third of all, we updated at the previous research databases up through 2008. So what, we, what people can do going forward is simply add to our database and continue to monitor the effectiveness of these programs going forward. We believe that early family parent training programs should be used to prevent behavior problems in the first five years of life. It has very few negative benefits and a lot of very clear benefits. And for those of you who are as older than I am, uh, my dad reminded me last night, the old Quaker State commercial. You can pay me now or you can pay me later. Maybe one person in the room remembers that. Uh, but that's the same kind of idea with the early family parent training programs. So this is where I violated everything. Uh, so where do we go from here? You know, as all good academics do, we only ask one question, then we open up the area for more research. What these programs need to do next in terms of their evaluation components are to examine the effects in other non-crime domains. So for example, do these programs have ancillary benefits for education, for employment, for relationship quality that last throughout the entire life course, first of all. The second thing we need to understand a little bit more clearly is the causal mechanism. So these programs work very early in, in the mother and the child's life, but what exactly is happening to the child during those formative years that then sets the stage for lower crime and other ancillary benefits over and throughout the life course. So we need to flesh that process out more. And the third thing that's very important is the, um, the importance of cost-benefit analysis. And I know that's a very big buzzword for a lot of people and it's also a very dangerous thing to say because depending upon how you do cost-benefit analysis, it's not always what it always seems to be. Uh, but the Washington State Institute for Public Policy has advanced this a particular approach by, with the work of Steve Aos as a way of performing these kinds of cost-benefit analysis, recognizing the limitations and the advantages of each of these. But we think we need to put some dollar estimates on these figures so people can come away with some sort of dollar savings as a result of investment in these programs. With that said, I'll turn it over to the next speaker.